How's it going, everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins, and welcome back to another episode of the most rare and valuable coins in Canada. Today, we're going to be discussing the rarest Canadian dime probably produced in the last 75 years, a dime that can be worth tens of thousands of dollars that you may have had no idea even existed. Because this coin only has a few known examples, its value is only exceeded by its rarity, and even though you probably won't ever find any of these floating around in the wilds of circulation or in your pocket change, crazier things have happened and you should never say never. In this video, we will explore the historical context surrounding the production of this rare and valuable 10 cent coin and delve into why it holds such importance in Canadian numismatic history. Also, we will discuss the distinguishing and identifying features, its significance amongst collectors, and also its potential value if you are ever to find a legitimate example. Before I do get into this, I would really appreciate if you guys would hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can see my new content as it is being released. Also, make sure to stay to the end of the video if you would like to find out how much you could get for this coin if you were ever to find one. And then without further ado, what do you say we get right into it and discuss the 1969 Canadian Large Day Dime? Let's get it, guys. So first, let's give you guys some information so you have some context on how this coin came into existence. In the year 1967, the rising price of silver forced a reduction in the silver content in Canadian 10 and 25 cent coins from 80% to 50% composition, although some coins were still minted in 80% during that year. 1967 and 1968 are considered transitional years for the amount of silver commonly used in Canadian coins and the composition was eventually changed to pure nickel in the year 1968 with around a third of the dimes and quarters being composed of 50% silver for that final year. The transition from silver to nickel composition in Canadian coins during the years 1967 and 1968 was a significant change in the country's currency. The shift marked a move towards a more cost-effective and durable material for coin production. This ultimately impacted the value and collectability of these coins for numismatists. This was a very experimental and tumultuous time at the Canadian Mint and there was also a very heavy workload as the full run of 1967 commemorative coins was no doubt a huge undertaking in the years prior and working during this time must have been a strain on Mint employees. To help relieve some of this pressure, some of the Canadian 10 cent coins produced in the year 1968 were actually struck at the Philadelphia Mint in the United States. These are distinguishable from the Canadian dimes by looking at the width of the grooves along the outside reading of the coin. The dimes struck in the United States will have wider and more squared notches and the Canadian dimes will be more narrow and angled. The Philadelphia dimes are considered to be the more rare of the two varieties, but neither the silver nor nickel 1968 dimes are exceptionally valuable. However, in the year 1969, a production mishap occurred during the creation of the Canadian dimes resulting in an error in the matrices. By mistake, a portion of the coins produced had the large date feature instead of the intended small date. Since multiple coins are struck simultaneously by various machines, a mixture of both large date and small date coins emerged. Presently, there are around 20 confirmed instances of these error coins, but it is believed that there are still around 20 to 30 out in circulation that remain undiscovered. To identify this coin, you have to look at the date on the reverse of the coin. I will show an example of what both the small and large dates look like, but what I highly suggest is that if you find a Canadian dime from the year 1968, hold on to it because the date on the 1968 dime was only struck in the large size and the size of the numerals was reduced the following year, or at least so we thought. So if you compare the size of the date on your 1969 dime and the size looks similar to the date on the 1968, then you may have yourself a holy grail coin. The examples of this coin that have been discovered are usually not in the greatest condition and at best are barely pushing mint state. 
If you were ever to find a legitimate example of one of these and it scored higher in the MS range, it could easily be one of the most valuable Canadian coins of all time. Though there are only few known examples, it is very rare that an actual estimate exists for the amount of holy grail coins that could still be found floating around in the wilds of circulation. And this is one where if you hunt dimes regularly, you can definitely validate the lack of other good stuff to look for. So now that we've given you some information on how this coin came into existence and how to identify it, what do you say we discuss the specifications and potential value? The specifications of the 1969 large date dime should be exactly the same as the 1969 small date except for the size of the numerals on the date. It is composed of 100% nickel, it has a weight of 2.07 grams, a diameter of 18.03 millimeters, a thickness of 1.16 millimeters. The obverse was designed by Arnold Mockin and Myron Cook. The reverse was designed by Emmanuel Hahn and Myron Cook. The edge of the coin is reeded, it is magnetic, and the die axis is in metal alignment, as is the standard for most Canadian coins. So let's get into the values for the 1969 large date dime. First, just to give you an idea in comparison, the highest graded known example of the 1969 currently is an AU50, which is just before the MS mark. As I mentioned earlier, if you were to find one of these and it did score anywhere in the mid MS range, this would be an incredibly rare and valuable Canadian dime that could easily be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And one of the best things about this 1969 large date dime is it is not actually that old. I have found 1970 nickels, dimes, quarters that are in a high mid state. So your chance of being able to find one of these and it's in decent condition aren't the worst ever. Hopefully someone didn't find one of these and bash it with a hammer not knowing what it is. But you never know to find one of these even at the absolute bottom of the Sheldon scale would be a nice little treat. So just to give you guys an idea of value, the 1969 small date can be worth up to 20 cents for an AU50, which is two times its face value. It can be worth a couple dollars when it starts to hit the MS region. It can be worth 10, 20 dollars when it starts to hit around an MS65. Now, when it comes to the 1969 large date, on the very bottom end of the Sheldon scale, it is worth $11,300 for an F12. So that is not the absolute bottom. The absolute bottom of the Sheldon scale is an about good or a good, which is a three or four out of the 70 point system. But an F12 is still pretty low, not the greatest shape ever, that is for sure. And you're still getting over $10,000 for this dime. Now on the high end, one of the highest graded known examples is an AU50 and it can be worth around $21,000 $200 for an AU50 example. And as I mentioned earlier on, it is estimated that somewhere around 20 or 30 of these are still floating around in the wilds of circulation. So I suggest that you guys, if you have your piggy bags, you go bust it open, look through your dimes, because if you were to find one of these and it has been through the meat grinder, you can still make over $10,000. So definitely a good one to have on your radar and to keep your eyes out for, whether you're sifting through your pocket change or you are coin roll hunting. What do you guys think about the 1969 large date dime? How many do you think are still out there? And what would you ever do if you found a legitimate example or if you have ever found any coins similar to the one discussed in this video, let me know down in the comments. Also, I would really appreciate if you guys would smash that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, and also hit that bell notification so you can stay up to date with my new content as it is being released. But I think that is pretty much gonna do it for this one, folks. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.